Hello and welcome to today's webcast, Standing Out as a Leader. My name is Sarah Gonzalez, I'm from Redback Conferencing and I will be your facilitator for today's session. Today we're joined by John Colbert from Corporate Edge and once again he's here to inspire us when it comes to engagement, leadership and also how you can further your career. How are you today John? Good, thanks Sarah. Great, lovely to have you with us and I love it when we have John here because we don't just stick to PowerPoint slides, we have a whiteboard, <laughs> it's interactive and like I said it's all about people understanding themselves and their career and how they can stand out which exactly is what we're going to talk about today. So just give us a bit of a run through on how today's going to progress. Yeah sure. No. Thanks, Sarah. It's, look, it's a, um, what, what we're going to do is we're going to cover off a, a couple of topics, but mm. from a couple of different perspectives, because we're sort of talking about engagement, which is around helping to build great teams, yeah. there's going to be two ways we want people to uh, think about it. So first of all, we want the people watching to sort of think about their own career and their own leadership and mm -hmm. their own personal brand, which we'll touch on, yep. and how are they demonstrating how engaged they are yep. at work, because that's going to bring career opportunities. And then the other is to get into how they can understand how engaged their own team is, so mm. that they can then start to work out what to do about it. Great. Now, one thing I really want to um, touch on, I think you're actually going to talk a lot about it over the next 45 minutes, is engagement. And pretty much every event we do, everyone we speak to, they talk about engagement, and it is a bit of a buzzword, but yeah. you're going to talk about it a little bit differently. So what do we mean when we say engagement? Good. Really good question yep. to start off with. We're going to keep it. We're going to keep it really, really simple when it comes to whether whether people are engaged, which yep. is also then to see if our, our viewers are actually engaged. Yes. It comes down uh, the word I'm going to put up here to sort of get us thinking about it is how emotionally invested are we? Okay. So if we're thinking about uh, how engaged we are mm -hmm. at work or when we're thinking about our teams, how emotionally invested are we in our jobs? Yep. So in short, how much do we care mm. is a good way to think about it. So one of the things we do know about when it comes to workplaces and, and teams is people who are engaged are, are coming to work for what they can give mm -hmm. because they really value their job, they value the work environment they're in, they really enjoy the manager that they're working for, the team that they're part of. So they're actually seeing that work is a really fulfilling part yep. of their life and they're coming to, to work to give something. When that's not there, people are coming to work for what they can get. And do we, is that just someone with a smile on their face? How do we actually know if someone is engaged? Yeah, How does look, that all begin? Fantastic. Look, really good question. That's probably, uh, there's probably a couple of ways I want to sort of go through mm. this. As I run through what, what I guess, engagement's about, yep. I want those watching to be thinking about, you know, from a couple of perspectives, if I lead a team or if you're leading a team, what are the ways that I can sort of look at my team to get an understanding of how engaged they are. Mm. So it's really a good way of actually literally sort of doing a bit of an assessment, a bit of a diagnosis yeah. to sort of say, how emotionally invested are the people that I'm leading right now? At the same time as I go through this, I love everybody to be thinking about you know, what does it actually say about me? Mm. How emotionally invested am I? Because yep. as I work through, as we sort of work through these things in terms of what the indicators are of engagement, I want the people watching to be thinking, if others were looking at me from inside the organisation, so if senior leaders or more senior executives or people that I work with on a day-to-day -day basis were looking at me and on, a da on how I work, yep. How engaged would they think I am? So it's sort of both ways, isn't it then? Totally. So, and um, like you said, we want everyone to sort of reflect on what we're saying over the next um, 45 minutes or yeah. so, but also ask questions. We've got um, an iPad here, so any questions that will be coming through will be here. And also just for people also asking, um, especially Lisa, will this be emailed to us so you can review content? It will be yep. recorded and everything you say will be able to view, be viewed later. Fantastic. Excellent. <laughs> um, okay, so let's cool. really get into yeah, this yeah. then um, and really talk about the indicators of engagement. Yeah, because, excellent. Yeah. Great. Good way to start. So what we're looking at is, yeah, how would we know yep. someone's engaged? Yes. Okay, that's what we're going to work through. And there's, there's three key ones that we're going to cover off with a little bit under each, which is also then a good way to, to check if others were looking at me, how would they know whether I'm engaged? They're the two ways we want to look at it. Right. So very first thing when it comes to engagement, the first indicator is what we call conversations. So it's one of the first ways to get an understanding of how engaged people are is what conversations are taking place okay. around the business. So this is, I guess, you as a leader, when you're observing you know, the behaviours and the interactions of your team, mm. you're, you're looking at what things are they saying. And under conversations, there's three things that we want to look at even within that. The first is, are people talking? 
It's really simple. Are people actually having conversations? Mm. You would be amazed how many workplaces we go into and you'll see people kind of all at a communal tea area, like a, a lunch area, and people sort of passing each other and not even really interacting or kind of it's just a... Yeah. Hi. Or is it just hey, like yeah. a, hey, how's the weather? Yeah, like, hey, no... how's your going? Like, so just yeah. make, make my cup of tea and kind of like, hey, hey how are you? And they just go... Yeah. There's, there's something but not even really interacting. Yeah. Great example, we sometimes will walk into meeting rooms or conference rooms and you'll see people that sort of get there, particularly cross-functional project teams, mm. people sort of come together for this meeting, they sort of all get in the room and they sit down, they're kind of all sitting there and they're sort of just looking at their phones and the messages, they're all sitting at different points mm. in the table, not even actually interacting with each other, wow. waiting until somebody sort of comes in to kick off the meeting. So the first, what that's actually saying is you know, we're not even conversing. I mean, we, we, we've got people involved in anything. Whenever human beings are involved, the first thing we've got to get it right is communication. Is that just an inherent thing? Some people are shy, though. Do you think? It or is. How do how do we really take a look at that? Okay. Well, if it does actually indicate that, so and that's what yeah. this is about. It's okay. okay. So if people aren't having conversations, yeah. that tells me something. And as a leader. What, yeah. We then need okay. to do something Great. about it because that's that's what that's what it means. Okay, okay so maybe they don't feel mm. comfortable to talk to each other. Okay, so we've got some trust issues that maybe we need to build, or mm. we've got to make people feel more comfortable. But that's the thing: are people actually talking? Is okay. the very first thing we want to look at. Next Second thing. thing is actually how are they talking about it? Oops, sorry, I'm going to change that. Strike that. I'll clean this up a sec. It's actually what are they talking about? So this is another one. Back to your point then about, you know, we're just talking about the weather. Mm. When they are having conversations, what are the topics of those conversations? What's the content of those conversations? This is a good indication of how engaged people are. If they're just talking about the weather and what we did on the weekend, mm. as opposed to things that are going on around the business, you know, things that they're hearing around the business, how people are going in their roles, what are some of the challenges that you're facing, what ideas are you guys working on? Mm. Hey, we've just heard a, a company announcement's just come out. What did you guys think about that? What sort of stuff have you taken from that? Versus we have a company announcement and then people leave the room and they just go back to, hey, what are you doing tonight? Yeah. It's really interesting because I know we've got to have social relationships at work. That's really important. Yep. But listening to the, the topics of the conversations is an indication of how engaged people are mm -hmm. and what they've taken out of it. So I'll give you one, one story on this. It was interesting. So I coach a, um, a GM of a pretty large business in Australia. And, and when he first started with his company, mm. we did a lot of work on his, I guess, his vision and his strategy and the goals and where he wanted to take the, take the organisation. And then he did a big presentation. So he did this big sort of town hall. He got mm. everybody together and he did this big presentation to say kind of this is what we're going for. Here's, here's, here's kind of my vision for the team. Yeah. And it was actually quite an inspiring session. Everyone's yeah. really, really positive. And everyone's like, rah, rah, yeah, we're on board. And then he went away on holidays for four weeks. And when he came back from holidays after four weeks, he had, went and had three conversations just with people around the office. He mm. went and just spoke to uh, some managers who attended it. And he went to uh, the first person. He said, oh, so what did you think about the presentation I did uh, four weeks ago? Yep. And the first person said, goes, yeah, no, that was really interesting. I can't wait to, can't wait to hear more. Can't wait to know, um, yeah, what that means for me. Yep. He goes, okay. Talks to the second person. Uh, well, what'd you take from it? The second person goes, yeah, yeah, it wasn't bad. You know, curious to see whether we're actually going to be able to do anything about it. Interested to see whether anything's going to change. Mm. Goes to the third person. And the third person goes, um, oh, you know what? That was really challenging. Um, but just what I wanted to say is since that, since that discussion, what I've been doing is I've been thinking totally differently about my role. I've put a few things in place. I've changed a few things that I'm working on with my team. And I've got one big idea that I'm going to really try and work hard to get over the line because uh, your, your presentation mm -hmm. really challenged me. Now, let okay. me ask you, out of those three people, who stood out most to the leader? The last one. Of course. But I, I'm still trying to think, you know, is it just the, do the first two people just say stuff because they feel like they have to? Is that is that what we're saying? Well, or? they might have. They yeah. might have actually meant it. Mm. They might have. That might have been how they were feeling. And yeah. that's the purpose of this exercise. Is they have they have they kept that conversation alive mm. since? Have they actually been taking stuff on board to do something differently about it? Yeah. One of those people has got a really good personal brand in the eyes of that GM. And it's not to say the other two aren't hard workers. Mm. But here we go in terms of how engaged you really were in that presentation and what you've done since versus just I just go back to my job and just keep doing what I was doing is a good indicator. So are you saying as a leader we should be looking out for people like this as, a, as well as aspiring to be people like this? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Good. How, what are they talking about? Are yeah. they talking about the things that are going on around the business or are they waiting for an opportunity to talk about the weather? Yep. Uh, and the third is, which I just started on, is how are they talking about it? So what I mean by that is it's thinking about the words and tone that people in your team are using. Mm -hmm. You know, so a good example is if someone's been to a, just heard a company announcement, yep. they go, wow, that was interesting versus, wow, that was interesting. Yeah. 
Very different. It's different. Very different. Person who's engaged is going, wow, that's interesting. There's a lot of stuff I need to think mm. about here. There's a lot of stuff that I need to reflect on and work through uh, with my team. That's indicating that, you know, the conversation I'm having is one that indicates I'm engaged versus if you see that negativity comes mm. out, a bit of cynicism, just go, oh, yeah, a bit of the same old, same old, you know, rolling the eyes, whatever. Mm. You know, people sort of just looking at each other with sly looks during a presentation. That's an indication from a conversation point of view that they're maybe not that engaged. Yeah, I'm starting to get this, and it's funny because I usually don't get things this early when you start talking. It usually takes me a while to click. But this is now how we should be measuring the engagement. Totally. Because like I said at the beginning, we hear the word engagement just thrown around so much, but it's like, what actually is it? And this is only one third of it from what you're saying. Yep. But from two ends, it's about how we should be acting to yep. be showing we're engaged, but Absolutely. then also what are the signs that we're seeing. Totally. Is that it? Totally. Okay. That's Great. exactly right. If we, what we want to do, make sure from, from, from a career point of view mm. and demonstrating that I'm, that I'm really engaged, I want to make sure that I'm just talking to people. So just yeah. keeping an eye. There are people around the office that maybe I haven't spoken to or made an effort to get to know. That's a really good thing that I can do yep. to demonstrate that I'm engaged. Just making sure that I'm, you know, trying to keep, you know, really relevant, interesting, challenging topics of discussion about the business and where mm. the business is going front of mind and looking for opportunities to have those conversations all the time. Yep. And then making sure the language that I'm using and tone that I'm using is one that's really positive, yeah. supportive, constructive. Okay, great. Cool. Second. Conversation. Yes. So. so the next is then our care which is how much care am I actually showing or how much care are people in my team mm -hmm. showing, which is then indicating that I'm really engaged. Now, the first of these, when it comes to how much I care, is whether people are proactive and curious. So a good indication is if you're proactive, what it means is you're, you're trying to make things happen without being asked. Mm. You're doing things that maybe are outside your normal area of responsibility. Yep. You're looking for opportunities to get involved in new projects and new initiatives. That's what we mean by proactive. Mm -hmm. now, reactive means I only do things if I've, if I've been asked to do yep. it. So a good indication of, of the care component is to be thinking, how much am I seeing people in my team put their hands up for things, get involved in things, just make things happen, look for new ideas and driving new ideas and new ways of doing things without coming to me for permission as the team leader? Mm -hmm. And also for how often am I doing that myself within the business? Perfect. The curious bit is, what sort of curiosity am I showing about the organisation? So curiosity, fastest way to show curiosity is the questions that I ask. Mm. Now, you know, I've even seen a client last week who did a bit of a town hall presentation. You've got everybody in the room, and at the end, the leader sort of goes, hey, so has anybody got any questions about what we've just talked about? Silence. And everyone just sits there. Absolute I silence. <laughs> right, so you're sitting there going, okay, so what does that no say? No one now, cares. Yeah, correct. That's it's actually no one cares. Now, a lot of yeah. people go, oh, I'm just, I'm, I'm really nervous. I yeah, just didn't yeah. want to say anything. I, I knew there were some people in the room and going, if I say anything, that means it's going to slow us down from going to Friday night drinks. Yeah. So then what does that actually say about those people that are just, want to just get to Friday night drinks, mm. okay? It's not to say, yeah, we should all be working back, but it yeah. does indicate how much you care. But also, if you really did care, there'd be things that you would want to ask and want to say, and that's a really important moment. Mm. So for those watching, for you as a leader who's aspiring to build their personal brand, making sure that you are asking some really good questions, showing an interest in what was actually just said and what was just presented. Mm. You know, if emails go out, uh, you know, or, or messages on your social communication platform saying, hey guys, what do you think? Or we're doing this, any feedback, any ideas, making yes. sure that we, you do actually respond. Yep. If there's a company survey, making sure you fill it out and complete it. These are all things that are indicating that, you know, you do actually care, but also the questions on an ongoing basis shows how curious you are about okay. where the business is going. Great. Next is whether people are available and responsive. Mm -hmm. So here's a really simple way to think about it. There's a cry for help that goes out. Somebody in the team or somebody in another part of the business says, we're struggling, we need some help. Mm. Uh, can anybody spare some time, some resources, some effort, some budget, whatever it is? And actually people saying, yep, no problem, I'm here to help. Yep. That's what we mean by um, you know, the responsive piece and available. Being there to help others out, even when you're really busy. Mm. So it's just, I suppose, looking at your team and thinking, do I see that from people in the team? They might be working on really good, interesting things that they value and are really important, but when other people need, need help, or when you as the leader say, hey, I'm struggling, can somebody help out? Mm. What sort of response do you get? Yep. That's a really good indication. And the other part here is also just the level of empathy 
that we show because this is all part of care. Mm. So just showing that level, that, that empathy and, and care and respect for, for people who are challenged, who are under the pump, who are struggling a little bit, just making sure that I'm showing that warmth and care actually in the way I treat them yep. on, on a day-to-day -day basis. And the final one is quality and timeliness. So obviously this is around how much do I care. So if it comes to the quality of the work that I'm doing, uh, meeting deadlines, mm. you know, how often do I miss deadlines? How often do I turn up to meetings on time or do I turn up a little bit late? Mm. How often do I perhaps turn up to meetings and I haven't done the things that I said that I was going to do? You know, how often am I, you know, meeting my KPIs and so on without necessarily being asked to do a lot of those things? That's all an indication of of this, okay. you know, how I look after customers, how mm. I look after, you know, following our service standards and service guidelines. Am I doing those things without necessarily being asked to do it because I genuinely care about the company? So with this, as we're going through, um, every organisation has values yep. um, and, you know, a way that they live by. Yeah. Does this play into this or is this something that's separate? Because I look at this and I think well, a lot of people may have this just in their value system as an organisation. Yes. Is this where we need to sort of start you know, bringing this all together or is yeah. it something we just look at different as leaders? You know what, the point you're getting to is really, really important. Mm. What The whole point of engagement is what, yep. it, what it comes from without getting jumping ahead to maybe some things we're going to talk about at the end of yeah. this. What it's coming down to is the culture that yep. we have. Okay. Because the culture of the team or mm. the culture of the organisation is the thing that determines how engaged people are yep. and then leadership drives culture. So it's all sort of off. making sense now, it's all yeah. sort of coming together and you can't have one without the other, no. I assume, and to you know, bring stuff up to your culture, this yeah. is where you need to actually start. Totally. Okay. I guess then when it does come to say company values, mm. asking everybody of your listeners, what are the company values of the organisation you work for right now? How often do you talk about them with your team? How often do you actually bring it to life with your team? Yeah, you know, it's still amazing where we've got pretty good leaders who think mm. they're pretty effective in terms of what they do and making a difference and trying to drive for company results. And then you say, okay, so what are you doing on company values lately? And they go, uh, well, what are the values again? What were those things? I've sort of got well, to yeah, call it. Yeah, it's a bit of a uh, challenge. What, what are they? It's uh, so-and-so, it's respect, it's accountability, it's integrity. Uh, what are... And so I said, do you actually care? Or, you know, are you even talking about it? Let's go through. Are you talking about yeah. the company values? So that just there is an indication that maybe I'm not as engaged. Yeah with those things is what I think I am. I might, um, as a challenge, everyone out there, write down your company values and see if you can think of them off the top of your head. And then yeah. that can that might be a starting point for a lot of people to yeah. even judge where they are in terms of this. Totally. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely right. Am I, have, how am I being proactive and curious in ways I can be better at supporting yeah. the values and understanding the values a little bit more? Yeah. You know, if we've got, you know, a company value, one company value might be support, as an example, being supportive. So being supportive is a company value and then I get an email saying, I'm struggling, can anybody help out? And I don't respond. Mm. One, I'm not supporting the company value. Uh, and second, I'm actually showing that maybe I don't care as much as what I'd like. I, I, think, I, I think I do. Okay, yeah. great. Cool. Let's move on to number three. And the third one is commitment. It's a scary word mm. <laughs> for yeah. some. <laughs> yeah, especially it's like, uh, because it's, it's really key in relationships. Yeah. You know, relationships are around trust, care and commitment. They're mm. the things that make up a, a, a relationship. And effectively, engagement is really asking yourself, how, what's the relationship like that I have with my organisation? What's the relationship that my team has with me as a team leader? Yep. So this is now getting into you know, the quality of that and mm. how committed are the people in my team? When I'm, when I'm, am I seeing good levels of commitment and am I demonstrating high levels of commitment? Mm. So with this, first thing we will look for here is advocacy. Is that right? That's not right. Yep. I'm glad many, it's you right now. Yeah, there, yeah. Not I mean, me. <laughs> it's obviously means are they advocates? Mm. So, so, so your commitment to the business is: do you talk positively about the company you work for? Mm. So, do you tell your friends? Do you tell family? Do you tell clients? Do you tell everybody how great it is to work for your organisation? Would your team, so the team that you're leading, yes. would they be talking great things about the organisation? So, are they advocates? Mm. Suppliers is another good example. You know, so the suppliers you know, or vendors who actually sort of work for you, do they actually say great things about you and would yep. they recommend other companies to, to work for you? Okay. So that's a good starting point. So even just thinking how often do I do that and how often do I refer friends to maybe come and mm. fill vacancies? Yep. Second is how long do they stay and do they return? So it's a little bit around uh, I 
I suppose employee tenure, as so I say, yeah. how long they've worked for a company is one of, the th one of the measures a lot of companies look at in this regard. Now, one of the things with tenure is it's changing these days because, you know, workplaces are changing. Uh, millennials have some different values yep. around how, how long they want to work for organisations. They want to have lots of different work experiences. You know, a lot more people these days want to at some point maybe have a go at starting their own business mm. or, or have do job share arrangements. We want more flexibility and diversity. But it does still say how committed a person is in terms of how long do they stay, but even if they leave after a short period of time, do they come back? Mm. That's usually an indication that there's a good relationship, yeah. they're pretty engaged. You know, particularly contractors is a great example. Contractors that might do you know, three to six month contracts, but they do quite a lot of them because they actually enjoy, they enjoy, that. They enjoy coming back. I just want to sort of touch on something you just said. It might be a bit off topic, but That's I am right. curious. Um, when you talk about um, leadership and millennials, with them coming now into the workforce and soon to be in leadership roles, do yeah. you see the landscape of leadership changing? Yeah, definitely. Like yeah. How, how, how is that going to change in the future? What do we need to sort of be prepared for, whether we are aspiring leaders or yeah. we're going to be at different levels of our career? Yeah. How are millennials going to affect that and all of this? Because yeah. from what I'm seeing and reading, it's quite a different different breed. Yeah. Look, it's, it's, and it's definitely not off topic. Mm. It's a good, it's a good, yeah. uh, good thing for everybody who's listening to, to, to understand. And we're already seeing them in leadership positions yep. now. So, you know, the, I suppose that the upper age bracket, we've got uh, early 30s mm. is where the first millennials are. Yep. And they're already bringing a different leadership style. What's, what's really important to them is that the, the workplace that they're part of is, is a series of great experiences mm. for them. And the workplace they're part of has got to have a lot of meaning. Yes. So there's a lot more uh, expectation, a lot more pressure on organisations to be uh, companies that stand for something, to make sure that they stand for something that's meaningful. That's really important, mm. that they build a really supportive environment. Mm. Uh, millennials expect from the very beginning lots of chances to learn and grow. That's yes. really critical. They expect to have a voice. They expect to be trusted, to be able to make decisions. Mm. You know, funnily enough, these are all things that all of us actually want. Yeah. But for this generation, they're just they're critical things for mm. them, and that's just what they expect. So then from a leadership point of view, they're going to be leading in that style mm. as well and already starting to see it. That's probably a whole different topic. You could probably speak another hour on that, though, couldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Generational leadership. Definitely. Okay. Uh, and the third, final part yep. of this is personal learning which is uh, very relevant to, to everybody who's watching today, yeah. is do people in your team undertake their own personal learning? Mm. So do they actually do it themselves or are they constantly waiting for the company to send them on a training course? Yeah. Now, obviously these days, you know, not, a lot of, not all companies do that, yep. but the opportunities to learn have never been easier and greater than today. Yep. But that's a great indication of how committed a person is, that they're doing mm. their own personal development and own learning perhaps on their own time or at least initiated themselves yep. because it shows I want to get better. And also, I want to make a better contribution to where I am, and I feel that it's a worthwhile exercise. Yeah. So that's that's one. I guess, in terms of what you do with that learning, that actually comes back to things like how you know uh, the quality of putting training into practice, uh, how proactive I'm being to take the learnings from things like today and do something different. Mm. All of those things are indicating how yeah how engaged I am. How yeah. Mm. Okay, so we can see this all coming together now, the three C's, yep. which I'm assuming it's called. Yeah, um, yeah. If anyone does have any questions, please feel free to type it into the chat box and we'll get through to those. But how, in terms of everyone watching today, yeah. how does this impact them? What should we be doing so yeah. we can then stand out as a leader? Okay, fantastic. So this is then starting to, if I think about those watching, you know, their personal brand, I've yes. used that word a couple of times. How does that relate, like yeah, personal brand? really good. Yeah. Basically what it is, is your personal brand is going to be shaped by how engaged you seem to others within the organisation. Mm. So if you think about what a brand is, a brand is basically a name yes. and it's what, you know, it starts off as just a word and it's really it's a name, your name, yep. Sarah Gonzalez, that's, that's your brand. But it becomes more than just a name and into a brand as soon mm. as people start attaching qualities, benefits and attributes to that word. So when you're thinking then about a brand, it's what are all the things that people would say about me within the organisation? Mm. What are the words that more senior leaders, peers, customers, those I lead, what would they say about mm. me? So if I lead a team, the personal brand that I have in the eyes of those who I lead is going to be a big thing that's going to drive engagement in terms okay. of how emotionally invested they are. But how emotionally invested I am in the organisation and how engaged I am by through the conversations, care and commitment that I'm showing, that's actually going to affect my personal brand in the eyes of others in the organisation. Mm. And that's the thing that's going to drive the opportunities that, that I get. Uh, are there things that are outside of your control as a leader 
that might impact this? Yeah, look, sure. I think um, look, if there's obviously major changes going mm. on within the business that, that can have a big impact, such yep. as if there's restructuring yep. or if you've got you know really difficult market conditions. So the climate within the organisation's really challenging. Mm. Let's make it harder to, to, to get results. Or if the business is going through quite a lot of change, so naturally people feel uncertain. Yeah. It makes it a little bit harder with some of, some of these things. If we're not, if, if leaders above us aren't providing a little bit of clarity around mm. where we're going in terms of what the vision is or what the strategy is, that makes it a little bit difficult in terms of the conversations we have and how proactive and curious uh, mm -hmm. we can be. But it doesn't change you still demonstrating that no matter what it is, I'm going to do the best that I You're can. You're still pushing Correct. through. Yeah. So just, okay, we understand this now and we know what we need to do. If we can sit here now, we're listening to you and everyone online and we're actually pinpointing, you know, I've got someone in my team who is talking but they're yep. not really talking the right tone or I can see areas that needs to be that need to be improved. How do I then build engagement within right. my team yep. but also as a leader to sort of make it all happen? Okay, excellent. Look, the, that, there's probably a lot we could do on yeah. that. Just in terms of today, the number one driver of engagement is this word here, okay, which is mm. culture. So we know that culture drives engagement and engagement leads to, to great results and, and great team performance. So then if we bring it back to culture, you yep. know, how do we build culture? There's quite a lot of things we can do on that. Mm. But the starting point for culture is leadership. Okay. Because the leader of the team is the person who creates a standard, it's the person who creates the culture. Mm. They communicate the expectations of what sort of culture that we need, what sort of culture we want. They role model those behaviours around the, the culture itself so people know what's expected. So the culture of any team is a reflection on the leader. Yep. So what we're going to do is just, is just bring it back to, to yep. this. Now, short of going into what are all the things I can do to build a great mm. culture, there's a lot of stuff you can read and a lot of stuff you can do on that. Just going to keep it really simple in terms of a few things that those watching can do mm. to help, I guess, engage their team a little bit more. First thing we're going to do is you better, you better really care about your people. Yeah. Okay. You, you cannot be a leader. You can't build culture and you can't engage people unless you really genuinely care about people. And that means caring about your team. Care about those you lead. Care about your peers. Care about your managers. Mm. Regardless of some of the behaviours that you see, you've got to see them as people first and you've got to genuinely care. That's what great leaders do. So then bring you into some things that you can do to sort of help drive that inspiration, motivation. There's a great uh, um, video on, yep. uh, on YouTube that I'll get you to, to send to your viewers. It's by Daniel Pink and it's called The Truth About What Motivates People, The yep. Surprising Truth About What Motivates People. So it's an RS Animate um, video. It's fantastic in terms of describing some things that leaders can do. Uh, but what Daniel talks about are three things that come down to that relationship between a leader and their team yep. member. The first is we need to give them ownership. And these are things, back to your point around millennials as well, mm. these things are critical to millennials. These are the things that they expect in order to reach their potential. And if you can do these things, they'll do great yep. things for you. So ownership means that they've got the opportunity to be self-directed. So is that just um, giving them freedom? Correct. Yep. Freedom okay. and autonomy. Okay. okay. They're trusted. They're trusted mm. as an adult to make decisions. Yep. So making sure they've got that freedom to be able to do the things that they need to do. That's one of the things that we know is really inspiring and motivating for us. It's yep. like we're, we're being treated like an adult and I'm being left to my own devices to make a difference. So I'm, I'm being trusted to take responsibility and make decisions. Perfect. That's the first thing. The next is mastery. Now what mastery relates to is as human beings, we all want to learn and grow. So this mm. is around making sure that people have opportunities to progress. Progress and learn. Sorry, it's getting a bit low there, isn't it? So that's, that's all right. I did actually sort of squat down when I'm doing it. But yeah, it's just about making sure that they, they, they understand and they have opportunities yeah. to do new things, take on new challenges, and they're getting lots of feedback and recognition from the team leader about how they are progressing. Feedback and recognition is a really good thing, mm. especially around the fact that we're growing and learning. Any little opportunity you can kind of say, hey, look, the way you did that was was really good. Hey, I've noticed today mm. you've started to do this and that seems to be a real pick up on what you're doing last week. That's yep. great. And little changes in results or the way they're going about those things, just pointing those out, but also painting a little bit of a picture of where they can get to in terms of their own personal development and growth. Okay. Uh, and the third is purpose. 
So purpose comes down to making sure that every single person in your team is really clear of why they do what they do and where they fit in yeah. and making sure there's also a really clear purpose for the team. So a purpose for the team is why do we exist? Mm. And making sure that why we exist has meaning, that it isn't just about getting the job done or, or getting, getting the numbers, whatever it is. There's got to be a really, really compelling why for the team. It's, almost, it's creating a cause. That's what we call it. It's creating a meaningful cause. Just, um, we've got a few questions coming through, but I think this one relates to a lot of what you're talking about now, and I think it might be relevant for a lot of people out there who are yeah. quite new to this. So, um, and it's probably one question you've been asked your entire life. Yeah. How do you differentiate the main differences between a manager and a leader? So are these, yep. a lot of people might think as a manager, it's their yep. job, job to give constructive criticism or something like that. What's the difference and how does this play into leadership? Fantastic. So really simple. Yep. Um, the, uh, Leadership's about people, yep. management's about things. Okay. So they're, they're two roles that, that all leaders or managers, whichever mm. way you need to look at it, need to be good at. So when I'm wearing the, the manager hat, yep. it's when I'm looking at structure, yep. process, systems, tools. What are all the things that I need to put in place mm. to allow people to be successful? Perfect. So another good example of that's like uh, accountability, how we look at accountability, how we set up KPIs, mm. how we make sure that people's roles and responsibilities are clearly defined. Yep. That's all part of being a manager. Leadership is around people, yeah. and that's around how do we inspire people and how do we challenge people mm. who want to be their best. How so it do sort we... of it plays into both, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, you, you need to do both, provide both yeah. management and leadership in order to actually uh, get to these things. Okay, yeah. great. Um, are you right to go to some more questions yeah, now perfect. before we wrap up yeah, for yeah. the rest of it? So do keep your questions coming through, and thank you for that one, Austin. Um, now, we have one from Brian. So, when one is very busy, how should one factor engagement in their daily schedule versus focusing on getting things done? And this is a time management yeah, question, yeah. which I'm sure appeals to a lot of people out there. So. Yeah. Great. I'm really looking for the answer to this fantastic. one too. Fantastic. Look, so I guess there's a couple of things. If if you are a if you are a leader, so you're leading teams. So how mm. do I actually balance the leadership stuff yep. with getting my job done? First thing I need to just challenge you on is to remember that leadership actually is your job. Mm. So we still bump into that a lot. It's like, oh, I've got to do this leadership stuff, but then yeah. I've got this other stuff that I need to do. Yep. What we want to do is actually just change that. What we, we want to see that the people that I lead and the team that I look after is actually my primary focus. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is think about how I go about my day so that I reflect that yep. rather than thinking it's extra stuff. Yep. I do my job and then I do the leadership stuff because mm. it means almost like they're two separate things. Yep. So some really simple ways to do it is to just focus on the conversations that you're having with your people. Mm. Just wandering around, just talking to your team and think about in those conversations that I'm actually having with my team, how do I make that conversation more meaningful? How in that conversation do I challenge them to take on some more ownership, yep. give them some feedback on how they're going, which is around progressing and learning, just mm -hmm. even in existing conversations, you know, perhaps just inspiring them to do that a little bit more. And also how do I remind them of where they fit in, how important mm. they are and where the team's going? So it's just trying to bring that into the discussions I'm having on a daily basis. If I'm communicating via email or yep. if I'm sending messages, uh, whatever it might be, just bringing some of the leadership messages mm. into those existing things so it's not extra work. Yeah. But the starting point is knowing that it is me. That, that, that actually is my primary role. Yeah. You know? And then I guess if I'm a team member and I'm looking to show how engaged I am, it's, again, it's all of this stuff here. It's just being really present. It's being aware of it as being well, really isn't it? Being really aware. Yeah, and That's I think um, I've got some stuff from Corporate Edge in the past. And for those of you online, um, there's a survey tab down the bottom. So if you want to click on that, because you can also opt in and there's some information that Corporate Edge will send you afterwards yeah. regarding team management and the differences and an yeah. infographic as well. Yes. So yeah. just tick yes on that. Um, so moving into that, it's great. All these questions keep uh, segueing into one another, which is good. So right. from... Um, Errol, I think, um, what if you are showing all these engagement qualities and your leaders ignore, or even worse, they resent you? Is it then time to move on? Yeah, it could be. I mean, look, I guess there's probably one thing you would start with to begin with. You would probably want to seek some feedback. So, because it just depends on, that, that might, might come down to whether you really are a culture fit. So you yes. might be doing these sorts of things, but it depends on whether senior leaders are actually looking for those sorts of qualities. Because mm. this does show that you're engaged but it might actually be more about the culture of the organisation yes. and what qualities they want. And maybe it's not a culture fit mm. for you as well because you want to make sure that you're in an environment where you feel you can actually be your best. But if you're doing a lot of these things or feeling that you're doing a lot of these things and it's not really helping, then it means that your personal brand isn't actually where it needs to be in that organisation and maybe that's 
Mm. You, you need to move on. The flip side, though, what I would actually say is I would go back and, in terms of, I suppose, being proactive and curious, is to seek some feedback. Mm. So if, if you think you're doing the right thing but it doesn't seem to be having an impact, what you do need to do is show some real humility and trust and actually seek some feedback from senior leaders. Ask them to give you some guidance on the things that mm. you're doing that may be a little bit over the top, things you're doing that might be frustrating them a little bit, things that you're doing that aren't working and things that you are do things that you're doing they'd like, like to see you continue to do. So if you're not sure or it's sort of landing on deaf ears, just seek some feedback. Mm. Yeah. And that just on that as well, so how would you recommend constructively challenging a leader on that? Yeah, I guess it depends on what you're challenging mm. them on. So you're talking about feedback? Yeah, well, there's a question here just in general, but yep. I think feedback is one way that you can actually sort of approach a leader and you yep. can challenge them on what you're doing. Yep. But um, there might be many other situations where you actually want to challenge them on something else. And I yeah. guess if the leader is doing all this, they probably should be easily to be approached, yes. I'm assuming. Yep. But otherwise, are there certain um, ways that you should be approaching situations like this? Yeah, look, great. I think... A couple of things you can do. One of the things is when, when you're challenging uh, senior leaders, mm. what you want to be doing is making sure that they understand that it's coming from a place of positive intent. Yep. That it's coming from a place of that, that I, I genuinely care about the business. Mm. I'm really committed to the business and I'm just looking to have a conversation about the business. So that's why the tone that you use, the words you use and everything is going to be uh, really important in that regard. But probably to keep it simple is to just start by asking really short, open questions is a good way to do it. So just in terms of challenging, you may, there may be something you want to say or mm. something that you want to call out, but a good way to do it is to just probably frame it up as a question and just saying, so, so what are your thoughts in terms of this scenario and this scenario? Or how do you feel this is going? Mm. Or, hey, look, we've noticed a couple of scenarios where this seems to be occurring. Um, what are your thoughts or suggestions and maybe how we can mm. handle that? Okay. It's just sort of short, open questions with a positive tone that's just raising some issues, but it's making it very easy for the leaders to potentially respond yes. as opposed to trying to make them look bad or look like you're just being negative. Mm. And that's why it's just short, open questions with a positive tone, which is a good part of being curious. And yeah. you're having conversations. And you're having conversations. Yeah. You're talking about stuff that matters. Um, and, you know, just um, on here as well, we've got Sanjay, before we start to wrap up, yeah. how do you challenge difficult people who just don't want to go beyond their job? Once again, I think in some cases it's just a matter of, it's time to move on for some people and they're not actually right for the culture which is why I'm glad we went into that culture totally. side yeah look it's a look it's a really difficult one mm. remember that we want everybody to feel that they can succeed yes. within the environment and the leader's role is to create an environment for success but every individual needs to make the personal choice to succeed the difficult thing is it, people have different ideas of what mm. success is and you've got people who have very high security needs and high certainty needs and they really just want it just want it to be a job yeah and that's okay, provided the organisation doesn't need the, that job or that role to change and grow. So it becomes an issue if the company's looking to innovate, if the company's looking to expand, or if the company's looking to become a little bit more efficient mm. in the way they do things. And then you've got a person in a role who's not actually coming along with that. So what that means is then the performance of the whole team can yeah. start to be dragged down. So what you've got to do is you've just got to make sure that you've painted a picture for that person. Obviously leading through change is a challenging mm. thing, but that individual just needs to know that A, you care about them, you really do care, you yep. really do want them to succeed, but at the same time they need to know that the expectations of their role are changing. Yep. So this, this has been the expectation of the role in the past, this is the expectation of the role in the future and they're kind of maybe somewhere in between and they need to know that. Mm. So that way, okay, geez, I know that maybe what I've done in the past isn't working. So I've then got the choice of either trying to get on board and mm. trying to learn how I can do things better and work with my team leader to make that happen or I know that I'm going to probably have to make the choice to, to move on or be, be asked to move on. So it's about that communication piece, isn't it? Yeah. 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 And also the culture piece, Sarah, you mentioned that. Yeah. Whenever you're going through culture change, you know it's a natural thing that you're going to potentially lose uh, some good people. You may lose one or two people because mm. you know they were a really good, effective person and worked well previously or in, yep. the, in their previous culture, but they won't necessarily be an effective person for in the that. new culture. Okay, yeah. great. Um, so we are getting towards the end now. So thank you everyone for joining. Um, if you do have any further questions, um, please feel free to either type them in the exit survey um, or respond to us afterwards and we can forward them straight on to John. Yeah. Um, but in, you know, wrapping it up, you know, we've spoken a lot about these, um, amazing, you know, the three C's, ways that we can improve engagement. Yeah. But what would you like to say to everyone out there, you know, keeping in mind that people online right now are either in leadership roles and they're looking yeah. to enhance their standing or they're looking to 
to move into leadership roles. Yeah. What would you? What piece of advice would you give everyone? What I would be saying is that when, as soon as you leave, the fact that you're here today, this mm. shows that you are committed to your personal development. Yep. You're, you're committed to being the very best you can be. So it's when you leave, it's seeing that every moment that you have when you're in the office environment is a chance for your personal brand to yes. shine. This really is you. This is your life. We spend a lot mm. of time at work. So making your work a really a real expression of you and just bring that passion to, to every moment. Mm. And there's just some ways we can do it. We can have, we can have good days and bad days. Yeah. Right? There's just no there's no question about yes. that. But focus on what you're saying and how you're saying mm. it, making sure that you are you know, bringing some care to all the little things you do and just making sure that you are demonstrating that commitment at important times mm. and showing that same care for the teams that you lead. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, John. Always very insightful when we have Pleasure. you here with the whiteboard. Um, and I'd like to thank everyone online for joining. It's been great having you online for the past 45 minutes. If you do have any questions, like I said, or you want to find out more about John and Corporate Edge and the coaching they do, please feel free to contact us directly. Otherwise, we hope to see you at future Business Skills webinars, where we'll be educating and sharing more information from subject matter experts. Thanks once again and see you next time.